situation. Well, it's the same God. Yeah, the God who caused or the God who who wills or allows those things to happen now is the same God that willed and allowed that to happen to Joseph. Okay, so we can we have the Bible. That's cool. That's cool. But now let's talk about for those of us. Apparently, since we're not all real Christians, maybe some of us don't read the Bible. So wait a minute. So how? My question is, how can you say that you're a Christian but you're okay with murdering your baby? Oh, I never said I was a Christian. Well, that's good. What do you mean? Wait, 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 wait. Force? Is that like asking the slaveholder? Why are you trying to force your ethics onto me? If you don't want to have slaves, that's fine. But don't tell me I can't have slaves. I think you're saying you can't have slaves. Isn't that actually what you're doing just like right now? No, no, no. What we're saying is whether you're talking slavery, whether you're talking Nazi Germany, whether you're talking babies being murdered. Ma'am, if you're out here a thousand times, we said no. In fact, Christianity alone can provide a coherent reason for why slavery is evil. Not because of Christianity. I do have a question. No, they weren't real Christians. My friends, how can... That's like... No, of course, that's like saying Joe Biden's a real Christian just because he says he is. No, he's not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just because you say something, that's like the guy who said, Bruce Jenner, oh, I'm a woman. No, you're not, Bruce. I'm sorry. You can't just wake up and, and pretend to be something you're not. It doesn't accord with reality. It doesn't accord with the way that God has created the universe. Yes, ma'am. No. Well, it's, God's not the reason why awful things happen. Our sin is. The reason evil happens in the universe, God wasn't, God, it's not because of God, it's because of us rebelling against God. No one told who? Yeah, creation? Yeah, absolutely. Out of God's kindness. And, and why did he create all things, by the way? He creates everything for his own glory. See, I think you assume that the reason why God's created us is so that we can derive something from that. No, the ultimate reason why God created anything at all was for his glory. And so the reason evil came into the world was so that God, through Christ, could come and destroy evil through the work of the cross and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why, ultimately, that's why God not only allowed evil, but decreed evil to come into the world so that he could destroy it. And in destroying it, he gets greater glory and praise for himself. And yes, man, that is worth it. Because in eternity, eternity is a lot longer than 80 years. So you can go through hell on earth, you can go through evil on earth, all the evil you can think of. But in Christ, all of the evil that you go through is going to be restored and redeemed in eternity forever. I didn't say the 10-year-old girl did. Well, first of all, so I guarantee she has sin in her life. It's not like anybody is free from sin. So it's not like you can say she was... Yeah, no, no, I'm not saying she deserved to be raped. You Don't put words in my mouth. What I'm saying, though, ma'am, is she wasn't innocent. She should definitely have the baby because she doesn't have the right to murder a baby. Nobody does. Because, well, you keep saying that, but you're not, you're, telling, you're not giving me examples for how that's not murder when you eliminate your own baby, when you destroy your own baby. What do you mean it's not a baby yet? It actually is a human life. No, no, no. At the moment of conception, it's like... What do you mean first it's just cells? It's still cells. The baby at the moment of conception is a, is, is a, a, it has cells. It has its own DNA. It has its own gender already assigned to it. It has its own chromosomes. I'm sorry it does, man. Yeah, yeah it has its own chromosomes already. At conception, DNA, chromosomes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, oh, 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 oh. So now we're trying to complete the, we're not. They're not different things. They're not different. How many genders are there, by the way? How many? Give me a number. At least two. How many? Infinite. Many. They're like, we don't know how many. We don't know. Don't ask us. Hey, don't ask us that question. We don't know how many. We haven't read our CNN paper today. They haven't told us the new number yet. Two. Amen. My man in the back says two. I hear that. Two. That's right. Male and female. How about that, right? I mean, the nonsense of this. This is why it's... My friends, it's amazing at the same university, you have people who say there are thousands of genders. We can change whatever we want to be. We, we can, you know, I can be a woman today and tomorrow I can be a gorilla or an astronaut as long as that's part of the gender, of the gender spectrum. And if it's not, I'll just add it so it is. And then you have the same, you have on the same campus guys who say, what are they talking about? There's two. And of course, that's science, by the way. We say, oh, we love science until science tells us that we can only have two genders. And a baby at the moment of conception has its own DNA, has its own chromosomes, has its, its, its own system, set of values, set of life. 
then they're like, we don't like science anymore. We don't like science anymore when it tells us that the COVID shot doesn't work. We don't like science anymore. We don't like we don't like science. We don't like science whenever whenever science comes along and says that macro Darwinian evolution cannot cannot be proven. It's not true. It's non falsifiable. It's not you can't apply the scientific method to it. We don't like science anymore, right? You see how you flip you you kind of pick and choose. And I'm saying, see, if you're a Christian, you don't have to do that. As a Christian, you can actually have a basis, have a have a foundation from God that keeps you from devolving into absurdity. And my friends, if you don't think this has practical ramifications, tell that to 80 million babies who have been murdered in the United States of America. If you don't think that ideas have very serious consequences, tell that to people in Nazi Germany, the Holocaust, who were murdered by secular humanist atheists. You see that? So they want to say, hey, let's go our own way. Let's do our own thing. But look what it leads to. It leads to people like this lady who says that abortion is not murder. She would have been the same one. If she lived in the 1800s, she would have had slaves. And she would have been the one that says, these people are not real. They're not real human beings, right? Is that not what she's saying? Well, ma'am, is that not what she's saying right now? They're not real human beings. What did they say in the 1800s? They're not real human beings. What is the Nazis? What do the Nazis say about the Jews? Oh, they're not real, real human beings. No, man. No, yeah, but if, you know, circumstances, circumstances, if they were different, you would have been the first to say slavery is total. Slavery is awesome. Slavery is liberating. Slavery is liberating, she would say. Murder is liberating, she says. I'm a woman and a woman of color, and you think if I was alive at that time, I would totally, one, have the right to say what I'm saying now, two, have slaves and be able to own them. Like, I'm confused. Like, yeah, well, if you were, it, I mean, we're, we're transcending ethnicity at this point, and we're saying that your worldview is espousing oh, so the same thing that Nazi Germany espoused when they were murdering Jews. That's like if I say, why, if you were in Nazi Germany, you would have, he's like, I'm not, what are you talking about? I'm American, I'm not, I'm not German, I'm not, what are you talking about? That's, we're, we're transcending boundaries here. We're saying that your your claim is the exact same claim that slaveholders had in the 1800s. Your claim is the exact same claim that the Nazi Germans were having about the Jews. The exact same claim. And, and the only difference, though, is this. The only difference is this. Arguing for abortion is eight times more monstrous than arguing for the Holocaust. Because in the Holocaust, excuse me, let's talk about it, 80 million. 80 million, ma'am. You know what that means? 80 million babies killed in the United States of America by their own mothers. How many, how many Jews were killed in the Holocaust? 10, 10 million, 10 million. Now I'm taking away, you know what I'm doing? I'm pointing out, my friends, have y'all checked out the hypocrisy of this? She says I'm taking away the experience of the Jews by claiming that the, what about the experience of the babies that the mothers eliminate at the, before they even come out? They have no experience. Tell that to the babies whose limbs are being ripped apart from their body. Tell that to those babies, right? These, these people are sick, man. These people are evil. No, I'm serious, like barbaric. To think that you can destroy your own child, not even... That doesn't mean that you're right with God. That doesn't mean that you're not evil. So he can't forgive us for our sins. We're not apart from Christ. No, you have nothing that's... Here's the thing. If you're in Christ, when, when Christ comes to earth, he came... For those who realize they're wicked and they're evil. Why can't we just murder the baby and then ask for forgiveness so we'll be right with God? At least she understands the situation. Right? Because God is not your genie in the bottle, ma'am. God is not your puppet that you just control and you master. The reality is this. The reality is this. If there's a reason why you would be willing to murder a baby, it's because you have a heart set on death, set on murder, set on evil. And if I come, absolutely. What do you mean, wow? That's a fact. But if I come and I say that Christ came to forgive you and she's like okay then i'm just gonna go murder my child in. you haven't had the new birth you haven't received the new heart that christ talks about unless a man is born again you haven't been born again but i have seen women who have murdered their child and later on down the road maybe the next day they realize i have just murdered my child that's the most monstrous act that a human being can perform the most, to the most. tell me what's more barbaric than murdering your own child the Holocaust? No, murdering a stranger is not more barbaric than murdering your own child. 
rape, rape is not more barbaric than murdering your own child. No, not at all. Actually, I've been sexually assaulted way too often, but I should want to uh, want to admit. I hate to say it, by guys mainly. <coughs> Have you ever had a baby? Unbelievable. Have you ever been pregnant? Are you able to? But that's 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 a non sequitur. That's a non sequitur. All of this is a non sec. No, I try to sp I try to save the little girl babies who do have uterus. That's what we're after. We're you know, 80 million babies have been killed by their moms. How many of the 80 million? What's up, my man? Dude, what's up? Come here, man. This guy, this guy is the man right here. This guy, you gotta watch out for this guy. 80 80 million dollars, or excuse me, 80 million babies, right? What's what's half of 80 million? 40 million. So how many how many girls with uteruses have been murdered by their own moms? 40 million. You tell me who loves women more, me or the people out here say, kill them, kill the 40 million. Who cares about the 40 million? Do a what? But we love women, by golly. We love women, just not the women being destroyed by their own mom. We don't love those women, right? Give me a break, man. The hypocrisy is, is thick out here. Question. It is evil. When you get in your car, there's a risk, right? I mean, my friends, it's not about, hey, it's about this. The mother's role is to sacrifice her life for the children, ladies. Not the other way around. The child is not called to sacrifice its life for the mother. The mother is called to sacrifice her life for the child. Drop the mic and fuck with things. See? Because you, you have the mean? mic, you, don't, you want your so, voice to be here's heard. The, amen. Right Thank you, sir. I do want my voice to be heard. Absolutely. Why? Because we have truth to speak today. We have truth. We're preaching truth. Now, I understand, my friend. I understand if you're, a, if you're, a, if you're, a, if you're opposed to God's word, you're not going to like what I'm saying. No. I am, I am a true believer. No, my but friend. People like you, How can you say you're a true people, believer, people, people, let me but you let take me tell you. People the Bible like you, out of context? People, how did I take it out of context? Because when you're saying that, see, Adam's, Adam's creation was not the same thing as a child being born later on. Adam's creation was a one-time thing that's never taken place since then. When God takes, he molds from earth, right? He, and you know that, he molds from earth a human being. And you're right, he breathes breath into it. But what I'm saying, my friend, is that at conception, from that time forward, it's happening in the mother's womb when, Christ, when God is giving the spirit. It's not a living being okay. with a soul yet. How does John the Baptist leap in his mother's womb whenever Christ comes into his presence then in Luke? And in Matthew, it talks about, in Matthew, it talks about how the, how, how, John the Baptist's mother, she's pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary comes in, Mary is pregnant with Jesus. And whenever the, the child, John the Baptist, in the mother's womb is exposed to Jesus, the baby leaps. And she even makes the reference. Hey, when you came in, John the Baptist leapt. He leapt. Why? Because he's alive. He knows. Jeremiah said, you knew me in my mother's womb. Psalm 138 again, it talks about how God knits together these things inside the mother's womb. They're fearfully and wonderfully made. Because it has life, and life Good. is not limited to human beings. Everything that is in creation has life. It doesn't mean it's But it doesn't human. have... It doesn't, it doesn't have a soul. But they're not, not made in God's it's, image. It doesn't have a soul. It it's does have a soul. So, so do you think, my friend, Lamb, do you think babies that die from miscarriages or abortion, do you think they go to heaven? Are you okay? Answer it's the question. It's not a human being. So you would say no, they don't go to heaven. It's not a human being. It's it not is a, a human being. A human being. It's not a question of See, that's, hell. that's sick, it's man. It's not a human being. It is a human being. You're only a human being after a that's... child is born and it draws its first breath. Then it is animated by the soul. My friend. Okay, but that's two Read different things. Mind. Which one is it? You said he Read draws his mind. first breath. And it becomes a living being. No, my friend, if that's Adam. Mother, if that's the, Adam. If the mother's womb, human beings surviving through the mother. My friend, does God does God take dirt every time a human being is born? Now, does He make dirt and does He does He mold the dirt and makes a human, you know, like a skull and a body, and then molds the fingers, and then and then He no, He doesn't do that. He did that with Adam. That was a one-time event. Now God does it in the womb. He does it in the womb now. And you so just, now what you have... You, you just make it. You don't make, you're not making any sense. Well, my friend, you, you go and, you, and tell you, yourself you, that, you, but at the end of the day, wrong. you're wrong. No, you are the one that is wrong. Well, you didn't no, show no, me any scripture to back that up except it, it, one really bad example that was taken out of context. Uh, you're calling it a bad word because it, 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 it trashes everything that you're saying. No, my friend, that was a one-time event. No, 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 no. God has never it's made a, anybody a, like he has made Adam. That was a one-time event. It's a When there was no parents, Adam had no parents, so God had to make Adam out of the dirt. But since then, he does it through the parents, my friend. Talk about abortion. Talk about the hell. Let's not call it abortion anymore. Let's not call it abortion anymore. Let's call it murder. It's not. It's not. 
Yeah, let's change. It's a, abortion is just a euphemism. A, abortion is a word to lighten what it actually is. We're not calling it abortion anymore. We're calling it murder out here. So no, no longer call it abortion. Call it murder. Call it murder. Call it what it is. Let's hear the truth out here, right? No more euphemisms. No more playing it down. Because playing it down has cost the life of 80 million human beings. And so I'm sorry, my friends. We care more about we care more about human beings than that. Any other questions out here? Are there questions? 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 No questions. What about on this side? Any questions? Questions? Any seven. questions? Oh, my man. My man in the back over here. You got a question. What's up, dude? You're going to do this. And I'm just asking, my friend, what is the difference between you and I? Muhammad. Muhammad. My friend, do you realize why I'm saying this, though? Muhammad said things that were not true about God. That's a false prophet. No, I'm not false. I'm telling you the truth. Hey Amen. Joseph Smith is a false prophet. I, I got you. Hey, we're in agreement on that one. We can go a long way just there, right? We agree that Joseph Smith, but Muhammad's in the same category. He is, my friend. Now, let me explain why. Let me explain why. Muhammad thought he was possessed by the devil whenever he was went into the... I'm just telling you what happened. Okay, my friend. Okay, okay. But notice the difference. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to go destroy you because you said that. My friend, listen. What I'm saying, though, is this. Muhammad, I'll give you a few examples. I'm gonna, my friend, you can't tell me what to say. I'm gonna say Muhammad. I'm sorry. Okay, and I'm I'm saying this because I, you know, I love this guy enough to tell him the truth. If I didn't love him, I would just say, okay, you're right. I'll never say it again. This guy needs to know that Muhammad is a charlatan. Muhammad is a fraud. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can you say that, my friend? Is that loving of me to say that or not? And I'm being serious. Would it have been more loving if I didn't say anything? And I would argue, it would have been more loving to my flesh, maybe. He might have liked me better. Amen. Did I show him respect? Well, by calling his God a charlatan, no. You, oh, so because, no, 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 no. No, because it says in Matthew that due to others as, you know. Yeah, amen. Hey, if I was worshiping a false God, would you not want someone to say, hey, your God's a charlatan? But would you like them to say that's your God is a charlatan? Yeah, but he's not, so I don't care what he okay. says. Okay, but you shouldn't say that to him because you wouldn't want to. In fact, if he's if he's a real if he's a if he's a Muslim, I would expect him to say your God is a charlatan. Well, but he didn't, did he? Because he's respected. Well, actually, he did, sir. After he he, you think that guy respected me? Well, because you weren't respected. He told me he was gonna like punch me and beat me up. I know, but you My friend, but again, you're missing the whole point. See, Christ says, again, you're missing what Christ says. He says to judge with righteous judgment, man. If a guy comes out and tells me that he is, he follows Muhammad, and I say, listen, Muhammad is a false prophet. Here's why. Here's why he's a false prophet. Why does that? Why is that disrespectful if I tell him the truth? I don't understand that. I think it's the way you said it. How else could I have said it, man? I mean, be loving about it, be nice about it. Have was a I not? With a, I, don't know. I was trying to have a conversation. That's what well, I was yeah, trying but, to do. I said, well, hey, I'll say something off. and you say something. You started it Anyways, off the point is, but my friend, see, that's the point, I think. We need to have we need to have this discussion in a way that we have to realize it's not okay. It's not o it's not okay to not engage in a truthful way. Does that make sense? Right? If I have a belief. I need to say my belief. And of course it helps when you have something to say about your belief, when you can back that up, right? But if I say that Christ is the only way to God and there's no other religion that can get you there and all the other gods are idols, including including Islam, I need to say that. Do I not, do I not need to say that as a Christian? Or should I hold that back? What's your, what's your opinion on that? Should I hold back? I mean, if it's, if it's true that there's only one way to God and it's through Jesus Christ and there's no other way, should I not tell him that? Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't that be the loving thing to do? You see what I'm saying. Yeah. So, my friends, if you're a Christian, don't be afraid to offend people. Don't be afraid of that. Really, I think we're too afraid of offending people. We're too afraid of what people might think of us. Who cares what people think of us, my friends? Who cares? You... When you came to Texas Tech, did you not realize that you're signing up to go to a school that is a a slave of secular humanism? If you haven't realized that yet, let me tell you, this is a slave 
of secular humanism. I'm not saying it's bad that you go here. I'm saying as a Christian, you need to know what's going on here, right? So as a Christian, how do I engage? How do I go to school at a place that's enslaved to secular humanism? I'll tell you how to do it. Do it openly. Do it defiantly. Tell them what you agree and don't agree with secular humanism. Tell them why you're a Christian. Christ says, if you're ashamed of me, then I'll be ashamed of you. But if you, if you don't deny me, then I won't deny you. When you signed up to be a Christian, right? When you came to Christ, did you not realize that you're, you're coming and you have to give up everything to do so, right? What people think about you, what your friends think about you, the ridicule you might get. Give it all up and then trust in Christ that he's going to help you through whatever circumstance you're in. That's what we got to see here, right? And you have people, you're not the only Christians here. That's the good thing, right? There's a lot of Christians here. There's a lot of Christians who are professors. There's Christians who are PhD students. There's Christians, there's, there's Christians. But my friends, you know, if you're more vocal about your Christianity, guess what will happen? The secular humanists, they might be upset, but Christianity is going to have a greater ingress into the campus if you're vocal about it. I think we're going to have some new people on Friday.